Hey guys, Randy here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at a hub and drum assembly from eTrailer. Now there's something unique about this. This is going to come pre-greased. So it's going to save you all the headache that comes with packing bearings and the mess that comes with packing bearings. Especially if you've never done it before, it can be a little bit intimidating. It's not a hard process, don't get me wrong, but it is very messy and as you do it, you will sometimes question yourself as whether you've got it done right or not. And this is really going to solve that for you. Everything comes already in place where it needs to be. Uh, you just take your old one off, put your new one on. Of course, our drum is going to be nice, solid steel, um, really good magnet surface inside, really good braking surface inside. That's why I like to do a hub and drum swap. Those surfaces are new, they're fresh, and you know with a good quality set of brakes that those are going to work out really well. You're going to have all the stopping power possible for you. Now this is a 5 on 4 and 3 quarter inch bolt pattern. It uses half inch studs. It's going to come with new lug nuts you can see here. It's going to come with either the easy lube cap like what we have here or with the standard cap. If you don't have an easy lube spindle you can use just the standard cap on it there. All the surfaces are machined really well and working with customers with these, a common question that I get with these are the, uh, the spindle. What spindle is it? It's a number 84 spindle. You can match up your bearing numbers with what we have in the specifications to ensure it's going to work for you. And it'll also show you exactly how to measure out your wheel studs. The 5 on 4 and 3 quarter is a little bit more unique, unique rather than some of the other ones out there. So just make sure you measure and get the right one. But if the 5 on 4 and 3 quarter is not what you need, we've got just about every other size and spacing that you'd want with the same style hub. So the hub itself is designed to work with a 10 inch brake assembly. So as long as you've got that 84 spindle, spindle 10 inch brake assembly and that 5 on 4 and 3 quarter inch bolt pattern with half inch holes, should be in great shape. And again, I like this because everything's fresh, everything's new, we don't have any damaged components in there that might wear our bearings out. All in all, it's just a really quick and easy way to get rid of the old, get the new stuff on. Um, when we have this off in just a little while, we're going to take a look at this brake assembly. It's a really good idea if your brakes are old and worn to replace this while you've got this off. If you don't do it while this is off, if these fail or if you put the new hub and drum on and you realize that the brakes still aren't working appropriately, they're not doing their job, especially if you had a seal leak and they've got grease all over them, they're not going to work. So it's a good idea to replace those while you've got this off so you're not doing this twice. Now to begin our installation process, of course, we need our old hub and drum. We need to have that removed. So. You'll knock off that dust cap. It's basically going to be the reverse of how I install this. And once you have that off, we need to inspect a couple areas. The first is going to be our spindle. We want to check the area right here and here. This is going to be where our bearing rides. And also this area here. This is where the seal rides. You want to make sure these are nice and free of any imperfections. There's no cracking. There's no heat or signs of heat, which would look like discoloration. You can see this is kind of normal on some spindles. Basically, this is just from the cast before they machined it out. Just a couple low spots there. So that I'm not worried about at all. Just make sure it looks like it's in good shape. And one tip for you, once you're at this location, there's four nuts that separate you from completely replacing this brake assembly with the exception of a couple wires, just a couple butt connectors you'll have to reconnect. So I would do a good visual inspection of this because regardless of how good of a drum that we put on here, if our brakes aren't operating properly, we're still not going to have brakes. So take a good look at this, see what you think, make sure your shoe thickness is appropriate, make sure all your hardware is in good shape. This is a uh, a manual adjusting type that we have here um, but we what I would recommend is a self-adjusting type we'll give you the part numbers for a left and right side assembly um, on the video there that way if you do need to replace these now is the time if we don't replace these now we put our new hub on it fails in a few weeks 
we're going to be redoing this entire thing. So just keep it in mind and think about it. If there's something wrong here, replace it. And you can replace shoes, you can replace hardware. You know, certain points you can just replace those parts, but it's just about as cost effective to replace that entire assembly. Pull it off, brand new stuff goes on, new hardware, new shoes, new magnets, new wiring, the whole deal. So it's up to you, keep that in mind. But once you've verified you are either got your new replacement on there or it's in good shape and we're ready to go back on with our drum, let's get our box opened up. You see inside it's going to come wrapped in a bag. I like that. It helps to keep dirt, debris, and things like that off. But also we're going to have caps on there. This one happens to be the standard type. Uh, this is an Easy Lube spindle, so we'll be using the Easy Lube version. You can see on the back side here, we're capped off. Pull that off. Now you can see a little bit of the grease ran down on there. Definitely clean that off with some brake clean. Make sure we get the inside of these really nice and clean. All right, once we've got that nice and clean, set it down here. You want to tilt it away from you a little bit and pull this cap. You see we've got our bearing in there also pre-greased. Now it's time to slide this on our spindle. Just be careful because this will want to come out at you, so kind of keep your thumbs there. Get it lined up and just ease it on. Once our hub's all the way down on, we'll work that bearing in as far as we can. And then we'll put our washer on. Now these are the three components that we're going to save from our axle. These are all axle specific. So slide that on. These are going to be reusing. Your nut may look a little bit different than that. May have some tips that stick up and use a cotter pen. It's the same thing we're doing here with our clip, just a little bit different design. And we're going to use the channel locks. And I like to run that down. You can see it just got snug. I like to torque it and then back it off. Basically that helps me know that I've got those bearings pressed in there right where they need to be. And then at that point it's going to be pretty much hand loose or hand tight, I guess. We'll take our keeper, we'll slide that on. Now if you use the cotter pin style, well you'll replace your cotter pin at this point. Basically we want it tight enough where we don't have any in and out movement. So we don't want to be able to move in and out on that hub. We want to snap on all the way flush up against that nut. A little in and out, make sure we don't have any in play. And then just depending on your situation, whether you've got the easy lube, we'll put the easy lube cap on. If you've got the standard, we'll put the standard cap on. Now we've got that little beveled edge on our hub, so we'll take our grease cap, either design, we want to set it in there, and then we want to gently tap it to get it started all the way around. It's usually a pretty snug fit. There we go. That started all the way around, now it's just time to drive it in. So it goes nice and flush right up there against your hub. At that point, you're ready to get your tire put back on head over to the other side and repeat that same process there. And as you can see, it's really nice and easy. That's one of the things I like the most about these hubs, that it comes pre-assembled for the most part, it comes pre-greased. All we have to do is take off our old one, slide in our new one, get it torqued down appropriately, make sure we don't have any end play. We're ready to get back together. We're ready to head back down the road and put our trailer to work. So this is something I like and if I needed to switch out my hubs, I would definitely get this set.